I am Wanderer001 and this is my walkthrough of the user interface of the Canon Vixia HFR400. Here is the start screen which shows format, card, auto, and the date and time, as well as if you have the lens cover closed. Starting here is the battery life indicator, as well as estimated amount of battery time you have. <clears throat> Next is the record method. In this case, I have a 32 gigabyte SD card, which is why I only have two hours. Well, not why I have two hours. It is this portion down here, the recording method. In my case, MP4 at 60p, which is why a 32 gigabyte card only gets me two hours of record time. This icon here indicates a audio setting, which is accessed through the quick settings which I will get into. Uh, starting here, you have video snapshot. So you have a choice of video snapshot on or off. I'm going to leave that off. And again, because it's a capacitive screen, I can't use my little wooden pointer. We'll go over to the audio. As I said, it's set for wind slash car noises to kind of help cut down on that. Uh, you have nature or for outdoor. Over here, you have internal person speaking. Uh, I'll probably be using that one or the auto. Here you have music in an enclosed area. And then, like I said, standard auto where it just does everything for you. And see, since I put it back to auto, the indicator here is gone. You'll also notice this icon here. This is for doing extra little flashy things uh, pre-production instead of post-production. You do it on the camcorder itself. In my recording mode, it's not, uh, it's not available, but I will turn that on a little later. We'll come across here to the photo. What this is is just that. It will take a picture if you tap on it. You can also autofocus by touching certain portions of the screen. You see that little box that pops up when I touch it. <clears throat> this icon here, here, indicates face detection mode. Uh, so that's let, that lets you know that it is currently in face detect mode. So if a face happened to come into the screen, it would lock on. Here we have auto. So these are the different record methods that you have. Right now I have it on auto because that's what I prefer. I, I don't want to do any real editing or manual settings with the camcorder. I do those type of settings with a camera because I'm more familiar with them taking pictures. Still not quite as familiar as I'd like to be with the camcorder to do manual settings, so I'm going to avoid that. Right here <clears throat> is baby mode. This, this has some of the extra little bells and whistles like that image in the corner where you can make sparklies on the screen. Uh, it is not available if you use MP4 mode. MP4 mode. You can only use this using AVCHD. Uh, again, auto mode. Here you have cinema mode, which will allow you to have different visual aspects to your uh, videos. What I'll do now is I will open the lens cover <clears throat> so you can see the background, as well as the overlay of the individual options. So what I'll do is I will select cinema mode so that you can kind of see in the background when you select the different types of cinema modes how it changes the background to look. In this case, I changed it so that it's that old black and white. You can also see now uh, because Cinema mode is more of a manual mode that there is a mic level indicator here. But we are going to go back into cinema mode so I can show you some of the other filters. So that's the dramatic black and white is what we were looking at. This is an old movie. I'm not sure how well these will show up on my point and shoot camera, but I'm just trying to give you a rough idea of some of the options that you'll be able to do. If you like sepia, that's what Scipio looks like. 
Nostalgic makes it look kind of washed out in my opinion, but again, it's trying to make it look like an old 70s program. Cool colors. Vivid colors. And cinema standard. So I'm going to leave it, leave cinema standard. It's still on the black and white because that's the last option I picked. So let me actually go back to cinema standard. So while we're going through the other menus, it does not look uh, all black and white. Here you have scene. So again, another option, we'll hit okay. And this brings us into the options on the right, the different presets that you can have for types of recording. Right now it's on night scene, but I'm going to go all the way to the top, which will be portrait. Then you have sports, go back to night, snow, beach, sunset, low light, spotlight, and fireworks if you are so inclined. On all the screens, you'll notice either an OK button or this back button. If you're not going to select that option, use the back button to go back. Here we have the, the, the fully programmable mode. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not as comfortable with this mode as I am with just the auto because it allows you to change all aspects of the recording mode. Uh, I'm going to actually back out of programmable mode. And just to show you, I'm going to go into the baby mode because I went into all the other modes. So in baby mode, it changed my recording method to AVCHD and FXP. Uh, I'll get into what those are a little later, but you'll notice now that this option down here is available. This is those special effects options. In baby mode also, it, it records a few seconds before you actually hit the record button to capture, as they say, those precious moments. Uh, I will now click the extras so you can see what you can do. Um, here you have a pencil, which will allow you to do just that right on the screen. So I'm trying to do this around the camera so it's not going to be perfect. Uh, I will do the sparkly effects, or as they call them, the animated stamps. So here you can do different things. Uh, what will I do? I will do stars, I guess. So you drag stars across. Here you have a special part of the baby mode uh, where you can do progressive. Obviously, you can see uh, date, month, weight. Uh, so it will have a kind of a stitch effect later on so you can watch the progression of your child's development. And this is for photo mode, which I don't have any photos on here. The on-screen image pause means whatever is currently visible on the screen. Here you'll see my finger in the shot. If I pause it, you see my finger still in the shot. So I'll unpause it and I will hit and I'm going to get out of this mode because this mode has, like I said, more features than I care to, uh, to show at the moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the lens cover again because you got to see all of those uh, cinematography modes and the black and white is a little easier to pick up on the screen. So we went through all the auto. Now we're going to go through the buttons here, which is home, which as you can see will bring you to the shooting modes area as well as you can get to the functions. You have to double tap to get to it. Remember, this was a quick launch button on the main screen. Now, the they do have options such as the decorate, which was that little button in the corner, and uh, faders that are not available in all recording modes. Again, I am back to being in MP4 uh, 60p, which all these little extras aren't available. But if you're actually just recording video, and going to do post-production, you don't really have to worry about those particular areas. So we went through these already. Actually, we went through video, snapshot, audio, 
uh, zoom will allow you to manually zoom using the touch screen rather than the button on top of the camcorder. And the pre-record is just that you can enable a three second pre-record. We'll go through some of the record settings. This is where you can change the recording format from MP4 to the AVC HD. You would do that by clicking. So here you can either choose AVC HD or MP4. And in either format, you can choose your quality. In this case, I have it at the 35 megabits per second. You can drop it all the way down to four megabits per second. Each one of them will give you a little indication as to why you should be choosing that particular method. And the last bit of the rec uh, on the actual camcorder side, not the playback side, is the other settings. And just what that is, is the other settings are setting up all of the information for the camcorder. You can either scroll through this using the side touch arrow, or you can, I will grab the camcorder to try and do this. You can do it by scroll, sliding your finger to scroll. So those are the recording information. Here you have your other, uh, you know, outputs, LCD brightness, things of that nature, and language and time zones and what have you. Now the other user interface that you'll be interested in is the playback interface. Uh, right now, I don't have any information on the, the uh, camera. I don't have any videos on here right now, except for one photo of black that I ended up taking while I was um, doing the walkthrough. But in all of these areas will be your individual shots, which you can cycle through using these arrows here and here. You can get information on a particular item. Well, here, I will click on the blank. I'll click on the blank and it'll show me information. I can select edit, which will allow me to delete an item. You can delete more than one item at once. At the top, if we select MP4, we can switch between the MP4 mode and the AVC HD. Uh, all you would do is slide that over. As you can see, I don't have any AVC HDs either. And really that's it for the playback mode. Um, to get to the playback mode, there is that button on the side of the camcorder where the LCD, where the touch screen folds into. Um, if you're interested, uh, see the other video, which is the review, overall review of the Vixia HFR 400 as well as there will be sample videos linked from that. If you have any questions or comments or wanna see a particular part of the user interface or the camcorder in action, just let me know in the comments section below. This has been Wonder001, thanks for watching.